some other uh, economic figures that I want to give you uh, when we look at this map and I talk about the commercial and the industrial areas, the pink areas, the reddish areas. Uh, we are looking at the prospects of something like 18,000 jobs being created by 2015, which essentially replaces what was lost when the Army was actively there on the base. So, I mean, you're not looking at a substantial jump in jobs on the base. You're looking at basically a plan that in some respects recreates, just in a different fashion, the magnitude of economic activities that occurred on that base when the Army was actively there and had you know, 15, 20,000 soldiers, several thousand civilians uh, in the area. Now that 18,000 jobs by 2015, and when they figure when this base is built out by about 2045, 2050, it would be up to 45,000 jobs. At one point in time, it was estimated there'd be 100,000 plus jobs. Then it went to 60,000 jobs. Now it's down to 45,000 jobs. And I suspect that as the base gets built out, it could be even fewer than that. Because when you look at the way the industrial and resident or, uh, retail properties are being absorbed in that region, it's going quite slowly, and you will not see this base become some LA ever. And you're certainly not going to see, I think, uh, real rapid build out of the base overnight. And uh, as you see it, you're going to see in most of those areas where you see the reds, the purples, the pinks, the oranges, many of those include areas that have been identified as habitat management areas that have to be protected. So to develop uh, in those areas, there will have to be potentially woodland and other areas preserved on top of the green uh, areas that you see uh, on the map. that covers uh, most of what I wanted to say on economic development, other than the fact that there, uh, there are some interesting things happening on the base now. If you go out and expect it that over the course of the life of the base, when it's built out, that there could be a couple of more resort hotels with uh, 1,500 or so rooms, and I wouldn't be surprised if one of those were uh, in the area of the two golf courses, another one might be in the area that Delray Oaks wants to annex uh, on the uh, south side of the base. Uh, you all know that on the base there are a number of educational institutions. I always like to just read them off for you though so you have a, a real uh, impact uh, of uh, what's going to happen there and it tells you what kind of an economic machine education will be on the base. You have CSUMD, you have University of California, uh, which will have both academic and industrial uses on the base, you have research and business park uses, you have Monterey Peninsula College, Monterey College of Law, uh, Unified School District in the area, the Monterey Institute for Research and Astronomy at Golden Gate University, and you combine that with the fact that you'll have about 750 acres and uh, 1,000 plus soldiers who are tied to those, to the, that the location, but mainly back to the Defense Language Institute and the uh, postgraduate uh, naval school, and you see the kind of educational center that you're building in that area, which I think most people would admit and suggest is really a wonderful use, and, and you know, it even gets down to this. I've heard people say, well, there shouldn't be homeless uh, organizations on the base, and as a matter of fact, it is planned that there's about, I think, 150, 180 units of, of homeless uh, housing on the base, and when you look at that, uh, and I asked the question of a number of the homeless agencies, you know, you find out that there's going to be a couple of hundred employees, there's going to be three or four million invested in the buildings to rehab them. Everything that you put on that base has an economic spin-off. So when you get educational institutions, when you get homeless organizations, they all have that. I'm very hopeful that one of the things we get on the base is the California Conservation Corps because they can do a lot of things with the Bureau of Land Management, and frankly already are, to maintain habitat. In terms of environmental preservation, as I mentioned to you, uh, uh, roughly on the base there'll be close to 70% uh, of an open space, 75% right in that area when you count all the uses. Uh, the congressman already mentioned that uh, you know, up to 80% uh, or he didn't say 80%, but a lot 
lot of the base will be transferred this year upon completion of cleanup activities, which in large measure are expected to be done except in some of the Bureau of Land Management areas and state park areas. And those areas are shown on your map as the dark green area along the coast and then the light green area, portions of the light green area. We still have to meet the requirements of California State Petition Game. Uh, they want certain woodlands preserved, and they're talking to the Portal of Abuse Authority and the jurisdiction about doing that. Uh, and we have uh, basically reached certain agreements with Fish and Wildlife on the preservation of areas that will save 13 endangered species or protect 13 endangered <coughs> species on the base. And I, I will tell you that. Uh, uh, in, in my estimation, watching the fish and wildlife, fish and game, uh, our people, uh, army people, universities <coughs> working together, there's a real synergism there, there's a real positive attitude about getting things done. And uh, I think that uh, you're going to see uh, a base that has some real balance development to it. The Army will want to speak to this. They anticipate spending uh, $250 million on the base. $100 million has been spent to date to clean up the uh, uh, UXO landfill, fuel spills, water pollution problems. Those are uh, underway at various places on, on the base. Uh, that, uh, I think that pretty much concludes my comments with, uh, let me make just a couple of other brief points. Uh, this plan, as I said, should be uh, Barring uh, <coughs> circumstances, uh, it'll probably be adopted sometime in the middle of the year. But that still has still has to go through environmental reviews. So anything that <coughs> still has in terms of adoption, we expect that the balance of the properties on the base will be uh, obtained and turned over to jurisdictions by the end of the year. You should have roughly. Uh, if we get well, everything taken care of by the end of the year, you'll have essentially 95, 98 percent of base transfer. We uh, we also are working to develop some marketing plans to coordinate our efforts in terms of putting the Fort Ord out there in its uh, best light. And I think the best light is portraying it as a well-balanced plan. And uh, in conclusion, that's that's the one point I want to just reiterate. When I look at this space, I have to tell you that when you look at economic development, environmental issues, education, it is a well-balanced plan. Uh, there are cleanup issues yet to be finished. Uh, I know that some people are concerned about those cleanup issues. And I know the Army is. They're still looking at things like how to effectively clean up some of the beach areas and get the lead and the bullets out of the sand. And they're, they're looking at methodologies to do that. So there are some tough issues that are out there. But this is a well-balanced plan. The best way to make this plan happen is not for CSUMB and UC and the city of Marina to compete with each other to get one little industry. Because the real strength of a plan like this is to work together, to cooperate regionally uh, to make it happen. And I think that there is the effort there to do that with the leadership of the uh, Sam Farr and our four board to have a plan that everybody can be proud of and a plan that reflects the high level of environmental interest that exists uh, in this area. I'll be happy later on whenever you want to say Thank you very much, Doug.